Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the kitty tax. What is the big idea of the kitty tax? Well, simply put, parents, they cannot shift or assign their income to their kids. So if you work for a company, you cannot tell your employer, why don't you write this check or assign this check to my kids and they will pay taxes on it. Kids are in a lower tax brackets than the parents, so you cannot do that. However, when it comes to unearned income, so if you have a CD in the bank or some stocks, some unearned revenue, you can shift some of that income to your kids. Now, obviously, Congress catch up on that and say, well, guess what? We're going to create the skiddy tax where it limits the shifting of unearned income. Simply put, here we have the Griffins. If Peter has a lot of money, the idea is if Peter would put some of that money in Meg's name, Chris, Brian, well, I don't think you can assign any, uh, Stewie, not Brian, you cannot assign anything to the dog with no social security, then these individual, for example, they'll pay 10%, 10%, 10%, rather than the parents, their tax rate could be, just for the sake of illustration, 25%. So you can assign some, but not much, you are limited. So what are the rules for the kitty tax? Well, it applies to any child who has not reached the age of 19, and if they're over 19, 24, but they're full-time students, the child did not provide more than 50% of their own support. Simply put, if the child is independent, in other words, the child then, they can take care of themselves and they have unearned income, then it becomes their own unearned income. Now, when does the kitty tax kick in? Well, if they have more than 2,300 in unearned income. Now, this number, 2,300, changes from year to year, so be, keep that in mind. So if you're looking at this recording in 2024, 2026, 2028, the number will be different. But this is when the kitty tax will kick in. Now, also, the kitty tax don't apply if that child is married filing jointly. Simply put, some, someone who's in college, maybe they could get married. Once that happens, because they're filing with someone else, the kitty tax no longer apply. Now we need to know how do we compute the kitty tax. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Well, we're going to look at the kitty tax when there's no earned income. So when the individual has no earned income and would look at the kitty tax where the individual has earned income. Now, for the CPA exam, usually they only show you no earned income examples, but I want to show you both just in case. So the unearned income in excess of 2,300 is subject to the kitty tax. So if you have unearned income reported more than 2,300, the amount above goes to the, goes to the parent's tax rate. Now, how do we come up with this 2,300? Why is it above 2,300? Well, the first 1,150 is tax-free, so there's 0% on it. The second 1,150, which is 1,150 plus 1,150 1, equal to 2,300. The second one is the standard deduction for the child. The standard deduction will wipe out the second 1,150. Now, how did we come up with this second 1,150? I'm going to put it in a different color. That's your standard deduction. The standard deduction of a child is their, their 750 plus 400. Simply put, if they have earned income plus $400 giving, which is 1,150. So this is how we come up with the second 1,150. Anything above 2,300, which is the first 1,250 plus the second 1,150 is taxed on the parent level. So the first 2,300 is wiped out. How it's wiped out? Well, the first one is basically the government says it's tax-free. The second why, the second 1,150 is wiped out through the standard deduction. Now, why did I break down the standard deduction? You're going to see why I explained the standard deduction in a moment. Now, how do we report this income? Well, we have two, two options. Well, we could have a separate return for the child or the parent can allocate the income to their own return. So how would you report if it's more, if you have a kiddie tax? 
well, reported on the child and pay the taxes or assign the income to the parent as assigned interest and dividend and they will pay the taxes as well. Let's look at earned income. What does earned income? It means when the child is actually working. When the child is actually working, they have a different standard deduction. Their standard deduction is 750 if they earn more than 750. It's 750 plus 400. Well, well 750, 750 plus one plus 400 is 1150 so if they earn less than 750 they will get the 1150 now if they earn 6000 or 7000 their standard deduction is 7000 which is earned income plus 400 it becomes 7400 this becomes their standard deduction max to max up to 12950 which is the standard deduction for a particular year what whatever that standard deduction for a particular year for a single individual it happens to be for the purpose of my illustration 12950 this number could change now the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example where we have no earned income and earned income including given a scenario with a kitty tax Let's take a look at the first example. Adam is single, 17 years old. He reported an earned income of 6,200. Now, most likely, Adam is 17 years old. He should not have an earned income of 6,200 unless Adam is a famous actor uh, and that's how he earned the money. Otherwise, it's his parents' money. And we're told here Adam does not provide more than half of his support. Therefore, he's not really a famous actor. It's his parents' money. So how is how is that money taxed? Well. 6,200 exceed the 2,300 allowed for that particular year of unearned income. So the kitty tax will kick in. So Adam will deduct 1,150 because zero per, the first 1,150 is not taxable. The second 1,150 is his standard deduction. Then what's left is 3,900. So 3,900 is taxed at the parent level. Now let's assume Adam reported 6,200 and Adam earned from a part-time job 3,000. Now, Adam has unearned income and earned income. What do we do under those circumstances? We're going to add both and we're going to come up to gross income of 9,200. From the gross income, we are going to deduct Adam's standard deduction. How much is Adam's standard deduction? It's earned income plus 400 as long as it doesn't exceed the standard deduction for single for that particular year. Well, earned income is 3,000 plus 400 is 3,400. Therefore, 9,200 minus the standard deduction will give us Adam's taxable income of 5,800. Now, now, we, now we're gonna compute the unearned income separately. Unearned income, we have 6,200 minus the 2,300 that's allowed to be tax-free. What's left is 3,900. This amount is taxed at the parent level. 3,900. So now what's left is 5,800 is the taxable income and the parents absorbed 3,900. What's left on Adam's tax return is 1,900 and most likely it will be 10% up to that income level. I'm assuming whatever the tax rate happens to be for that income level most likely is 10%. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, true false exercises that's going to help you understand the topics better. Invest in yourself, invest in your career, whether you are a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.